Hello, passionate explorers of the English language. Today, as you know, we had no homework from last time, so we're going to jump directly into the final unit of the midterm exam. The subjunctive. So the subjunctive is actually two different ideas. Uh, I'm going to talk about the true subjunctive first, but you should know that this is now very uncommon. It is mostly now used in a number of phrases. You probably will not encounter it in daily life. If you take uh, some of my literature courses and we read older stuff, then you may uh, run into this, but not in contemporary English. So the true subjunctive, first of all, whether it is the subjunctive or the conditional, which is the modern form of the subjunctive, this is known as the subjunctive mood. If you remember last time, we had the imperative mood when you give orders. We also have the interrogative mood when you ask questions. And if you're simply saying something, that's called the indicative mood when you indicate something. So these are different relationships to reality. Indicative is when you point something out. Interrogative is when you're asking questions. Imperative is when you're giving orders. Subjunctive is when you bring out hypotheticals. What if? What if this happened? What if that happens in the future? So that's when we use subjunctives. The true subjunctive is formed by taking the main verb of the sentence, putting it in front, and then choosing to use either the original form, the word have or has, or the word had, depending on the situation. If the hypothetical possibility could come true, you would use the original form. If the possibility is currently not true, but that could change, you would use have or has. And if the possibility is not true, and it will never change, you would use had. These three ideas will come back later when we talk about conditionals. Uh, whether it's subjunctive or conditionals, the logic is always following these three ideas. Possible to, uh, possibly will come true, is currently not true, but could become true, and is not true and will never become true. Keep that in mind for now. Um, so as I said, the true subjunctive is now only used in a certain number of phrases. For example, be that as it may, which means uh, even if this is, was, or will be the case. Uh, again, we don't know the tense because the true subjunctive only has a few options. And all of those options are related to possibility. None of them are related to the time. So if you translate this into more common English, it could be the past or present or future. So for example, uh, if you tell me that you missed the midterm exam because you won a free trip to Disneyland on that same day, and you decided to go to Disneyland instead of coming to the midterm exam. And you described how expensive this trip would usually be, 
you tell me it's a once in a lifetime opportunity. You say that your entire family went. You simply could not miss this trip. And so now you're asking me if you can make up the midterm. Now, if I were a very heartless teacher, I would say um, going to Disneyland is not a valid reason for absence. So you told me about how valuable this trip is and how you went with your whole family, blah, blah, blah. Be that as it may, I still cannot let you make up the exam. Right, so even if this was the case, even if everything you said was true. So this sentence originally, well, not originally, but if you translate, if you take these words and put them in modern order, it looks like uh, even if that is what it may actually be. So even if what you say is actually the case. Uh, so you see that what the subjunctive has done is it has taken the main verb. And it has put it in front. And in this case, it is possible that you're telling the truth. So it is using the original form. Uh, be that as it may or be that as it may be. As here means uh, like. Another common phrase that uses the true subjunctive is try as she might or try as you might, which means however hard she again tried, tries or will try. So for example, I have just told you, you cannot make up the midterm because of your lottery trip to Disneyland. And you keep trying to convince me to change my mind. But try as you might, I will not change my mind. No matter how hard you try, however hard you try, it's not going to happen. So again, the main verb is try. Uh, we move that to the front. And the possibility here is about how hard she tries. She, she could try very, very hard. This is all possible. So we use the original form. Uh, so again, it's kind of missing uh, the repeated word. And then uh, the third common place we see the true subjunctive is uh, in Chinese, had he known earlier, which means if he had known earlier. Now, when you say this, it is impossible for him to have known earlier. This is something that cannot be changed. Therefore, we use had. This is something that is not true and cannot ever be true. Because this thing happened in the past, you can't change the past. Um, so we take the first word in the verb cluster and we move it to the front uh, and we use had to tell you that it's impossible. It's not true and it would be impossible to change. Now you will notice on the right. This is actually the conditional. We're going to talk about this a bit later. This is the current way that English expresses possibility or impossibility. Um, so this third example is telling you that these two sentences are exchangeable. You can turn a true subjunctive into a conditional and you can turn a conditional into a true subjunctive if you want to for some strange reason. One last place where you may still see the subjunctive today is in verbs of advice.
should, right? Which means this is something that you it it would be good for you to do. Um, and that's sorry, that's not a good example. Um, here, I suggest that you do your homework. So when I say I suggest something, I'm giving you advice. This is not the present tense. This is subjunctive. It is saying it would be a good idea if you do your homework. Uh, so in this sentence, it is still possible to change. So we use the original form. If I make the suggestion in the past, it still maintains this form because when I was giving you the suggestion at that moment, it was still possible for you to do it. So even though now when we're looking back, it's no longer possible, but when I made the suggestion, it was still possible. So we're also using the original form. Uh, suggest is the most common one, but uh, also like advise, which means to give advice. That's also not a good example. Suggest is the most common one. I'm thinking, is there are there others? Well, suggest is the most common one. Um, if I make a suggestion, will you do it? We don't know. So it is not certain. It is a hypothetical. It is possible. So we use the subjunctive. OK, do you have questions about the true subjunctive? Again, this is very uncommon, so um, it's important that you recognize. Ah, there we go. I just I just did that. I just used one. It is important that you recognize the true subjunctive. This sentence is also using the true subjunctive. This is not the present tense. This is subjunctive. Uh, because will you successfully recognize it? I don't know. It's possible. But when I say it is important that you do this, I'm giving you advice. So recognize is in the subjunctive mood. It's not present. Well, yeah, it's not present tense. It's the subjunctive has no time. Possibility has no time. Right, so as I was saying, it's important for you to recognize it even if you can't write it. But if you do want to write it, you should remember uh, these common phrases. And then, uh, well, these, all these examples, these are the most common ones. Okay, on to the more common kind of subjunctive. Today we call these conditionals because they always come with a condition. And following the same logic as the true subjunctive, there are three kinds of possibilities. Some of you are probably having flashbacks to high school grammar. So three kinds of possibilities. The first one is if it is possible. The second one is it's currently not true, 
but it could become true. The third one is it is not true and it will never be true. So here's how this works. If it is still possible, the condition is in the present tense. And the possible result is in the future tense. If you do your homework, you will learn some grammar. Now, will you do your homework? Maybe, maybe not. It's possible. But if you fulfill this condition, if you satisfy this condition, then the result will happen. So present and then future. Now, uh, we should we should draw some kind of timeline here. See if I can do this. Uh, okay, so so this is the first one. Again, it's a terrible picture. You have a choice. You can do your homework or you can not do your homework. But you are currently at this location. You have not yet made your choice. So either one is possible. The second one looks kind of like this. You have already made your choice. But it is still possible to change your mind. Is this? Can I draw this? Does this work? Um, um, does that make sense? So you are current. Uh, that's 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 not where you are. You're here. You are currently here. You have made a choice, but it's still possible for you to change your mind in the future. So I guess like this, this line should also uh, be able to continue, right? You have two choices. Right, so you have made your choice, but you can change your mind in the future. In this case, you take the first sentence and you add a level of past tense on both sides. So do past tense becomes did. Will learn past tense becomes would learn, right? The past tense of will is would. So if you did your homework, you would learn some grammar, which means uh, at this moment, you have chosen not to do your homework, and therefore you have not learned the grammar, but you still have the chance to do your homework. Time is the deadline is not yet here. So it's kind of like I'm urging you. You can change your mind. You still have time. Do some homework, learn some grammar. Okay. The third one is you have made your choice and it is impossible to go back. So you are here. And how do we form this? You take the previous sentence and you add another layer of past. So did is past tense. If you need to move even further back, you make it Past perfect, had done. 比过去还过去是过去完成. So from past to past perfect. Would, again, if you need to go back, make it, uh, sorry, this should be would. Add a have. Again, make it a kind of perfect tense, a perfect aspect. Um, by the way, another name for past perfect is the pluperfect. 
Blue means plural, multiple perfects, multiple past. So if you need to, if you're already in the past and you need to go further in the past, it becomes past perfect. So if you had done your homework, you would have learned some grammar means. It is now the midterm exam. You no longer have the chance to do the homework that you have missed. And you're facing the exam paper and you realize nothing makes sense. I walk by your seat. I notice your blank exam paper. I notice the look of confusion and terror on your face. And I say, see, if you had done your homework, you would have learned some grammar. Huh? So this is something you can no longer change. Shall we have another example? Give me a verb, please. Give a don't Walk. All right. So if he walks away. He, uh, nothing will happen to him. You still have the chance to walk away. You can get out safely. So this is still possible. Uh, yeah. If he has decided not to walk away, but he still has the chance. We add a level of past. If he walked away, he would, sorry, nothing would happen to him. So this is untrue, but still possible. So, uh, okay, and then the third one is it is not true and is impossible. So, uh, he decided not to walk away, something happened to him. And now we're looking back and we're kind of feeling sorry for him and we're thinking, ah, if he had walked away, nothing would have happened to him. So think about this. Um, small time criminal. Didn't do anything serious. Found himself in the wrong place at the wrong time. With people that he's connected with. He's not doing anything. But something is going to happen. So let's say like uh, a friend of his walks by and notices that he's there and this friend also happens to be a cop and the cop knows that something is going to happen here the, the police are going to come catch the real criminals and so this cop tells his friend hey you don't have to be here if you walk away now nothing will happen to you the, the small time criminal could walk away. He could decide to stay. Either one is possible. Let's say that this small time criminal tells his cop friend, thanks for the warning, but I'm going to stay. Uh, and his friend tries again. He says, OK, but you know, if you walked away, nothing would happen to you, right? Like, I know you decided to stay, but if you walked away, if you changed your mind and you walked away, nothing would happen to you. So at this point, it is not true to the situation. He has decided to stay, but it's still possible for him to walk away. Not, the police have not yet arrived. The big shootout has not yet happened. 
But the friend says, thanks again for the warning, but I'm going to stay. And the cop friend says, OK, suit yourself and walks away or leaves. Five minutes later, 10 police cars shoot uh, show up. Everybody pulls out their guns. There's a firefight, 15 people dead. And our cop friend steps out after the firefight has ended. Our cop friend steps out from behind one of the cop cars. Looks at the body of his dead friend and says to himself. Ah, if he had just walked away, nothing would have happened to him. OK, does that help? Hopefully that helps you better understand how to use the subjunctive. Questions so far? OK, one last point. So each of these is separated into two parts, right? Condition and possible result. But the possibilities can sometimes be mixed and matched. So let's use the homework one. Uh, the original one is if you do your homework, you will learn some grammar. No problem here, right? It's all possible. But look at this one. You have decided not to do your homework, but I'm trying to change your mind. And I'm telling you, even now, you can still change your mind and do your homework. If you did your homework, you will learn some grammar. Remember, the future, the, like using will learn here means it's still possible. So even though you have decided not to do it, I'm telling you if you change your mind, the possibility is still open to you. See if I can find a better example. OK, uh, so the original one is if I go to bed early, I will feel sorry, I will have more energy. Tomorrow. No problem, right? Open choice. It is still today. Uh, you can choose to go to bed early or you can choose not to. But let's say. You have decided not to go to bed early. It is now. Two hours past your bedtime. And you're thinking maybe this is a bad idea. If I went to bed now. I will have more. Energy. Tomorrow. Let's keep this consistent. Yeah, so. It's no longer early, right? You have already missed the window of going to bed early, but you can still go to bed now. You don't have to keep staying up late. And if you choose, you, currently you have decided not to go to bed now, but if you change your mind and you decide to go to bed now, you will have more energy tomorrow. This is still a very open possibility. Um, so in certain situations, it is possible to. Mix uh, the two halves of this sentence like this. If you are not confident in this kind of usage, um, you don't have to use it in your writing, but if you encounter it in the wild, you should know that uh, you can think about whether the logic makes sense, and if it makes sense, it is acceptable. OK, so that's the subjunctive mood. Do you have any questions? OK, so uh, the homework. Is to finish the handout. Which is. 
17 pages. Now, this is when I remind you, if you don't finish the handout, nothing bad will happen. I'm not grading you on your handout. I'm not going to ask you to hand in your handout. Um, that'd be kind of weird, right? It's a handout. Why would I ask you to hand in the handout? This is for your practice only. Now, next week is the midterm exam, so we won't have time to compare answers. And in fact, that's why I gave you 17 pages, because I know we are not going to use class time to compare answers. Instead, I have already uploaded the answers to Moodle here. So, uh, in preparation for the midterm exam, when you go home and you do this homework, the answers are there for you to check yourself. And if you don't understand the answer, please write an email to me and I will explain it to you. OK, um, so since this is 17 pages, we're not going to finish today. Let's introduce next week's midterm exam first, and then we'll come back and do some practice questions. This course, uh, the exams are all the same. This is the example exam I uploaded to Moodle. I showed this to you in the first week in case you forgot. Uh, here it is again. In the paragraph or paragraphs, below, each line has one grammatical error. You will see there are 10 lines, so there are 10 errors. Circle each error, two points each. So if you feel like something is wrong, circle it. If you circle the correct part, I will give you two points. And correct it in the answer space below. Um, for this semester, it's one point each. So circle the part you think is wrong, go down, write in the correct version. If this is correct, you get one point. If you circle the wrong thing, and somehow you do the right correction, you don't get any points. How does that even make sense? How do you circle the wrong thing and make the right correction? That shouldn't be possible. So if you do that, I'm going to say uh, you kind of guessed lucky. You don't really know what you're talking about. So you do have to circle the correct error. You have to circle the error in order to make a correction. Um, and so each line you have the possibility of earning three points. The maximum score is 30. Last semester it was 40. Uh, this semester it is 30. Hopefully that will make it easier to pass this course. Now this is a grammar exam, so you are welcome to ask me about vocabulary. Any word you don't understand, please ask. And finally, because you might change your mind many times, I suggest that you use pencil. So next week you will have 110 minutes to find 10 mistakes and make 10 corrections. Um, right, this example exam is not an example of the midterm range. This is just the form of the test. This is not the range of the test. This is not the range of the test. Last semester, uh, the course was designed differently, and um, on the final exam, we tested everything, which is harder. Um, so don't worry about uh, if you can't find all of the mistakes on this example exam, don't worry about it. But you should know this is what it looks like. Yes. If you circle the error, you get two points. But 
in order to get the third point, you have to circle the error and correct it properly. OK, yes. You do not need to write the whole sentence. You only need to correct the wrong parts. Now, the mistakes are one per line, but there may be more than one way to correct it. As long as your correction makes grammatical sense, I will give you the third point. Other questions? OK, now that you are all sufficiently terrified, let's take a look at the subjunctive practice questions. Page 25. So these are all um, verbs of advice. These are all uh, verbs where we would use the subjunctive. Let's look at this together. Um, so in my example, I said suggest, right? Number five, I suggest that everyone write a letter. Um, it is an open possibility, so we use the subjunctive, which looks like the original form. So it's just write, W-R-I-T-E. We also had this one. It is important that he. Oh, there are many possible verbs here. It is important that he. Uh, oh, I don't know. Listen to. No, we need one word. It is important that he obey. The director of the English program, right? So obey O B E Y is not present tense, it's subjunctive. It's an open possibility. Will he obey or will he not obey? Uh, either one is possible, so we use the original form. All of these others can also take the subjunctive. Again, this is not the most common uh, way to say this in modern English. You can also just use the present tense and that's fine. But if you see like the original form like be here, you should know that this is using the subjunctive. So request. And you see here a negation folding, right? So you can request someone do something. You can request someone not do something. So here they requested that we not I don't know. Sing after midnight. Another one is demand. Demand, of course, is stronger than request. So, for example, she demanded that I. This one should be tell, right? I tell her the truth. Another verb that we can use with the subjunctive is recommend. Right, a verb of advice. I recommended that Rita talk to, I think this is talk to, talk to the head of the department. Um, it is important, just means it is essential, just means it is necessary. These three words basically mean the same thing. Um, so you can use a subjunctive for all three of these. So like it is essential that I. I don't know, see you tomorrow. And it is necessary that everyone. Be here on time or like get here on time. So for most words, it would be like the present tense. But if you're using the be verb, you do have to write be. Questions about this section? Yes. I suggest that everyone. This one is probably right, write a letter, right? Or maybe like send a letter. There's more than one answer. Uh, number seven. 
if this he is a student, then it's probably that he obey the director or that he follow the director. If this he is a teacher and everybody wants him, uh, everybody likes him, then maybe this one could be, it is important that he become the director of the English program. So there's more than one answer. The point is to use the subjunctive. Other questions about this section? Okay, next one. Same thing, but here we have some uh, other possibilities. So the first one, recommend. The verb is take, so you write take. The second one, insist. The verb is name, which means give a name to. But look at this. The new baby. This should be the object, right? The baby gets the name. The baby doesn't give a name. So this is passive voice. Be named, right? The passive is a be verb plus the past participle. In this case, it is in the subjunctive mood. So the be verb is in its original form. So this is a subjunctive passive voice. Uh, the third one, recommend, stay. Is this one active or passive? Is it stay or be stayed? It's stay. You can't be stayed. There is no passive voice here. Trick question. Number four, the students, okay, request. So it's subjunctive that the test postpone. Should this be active or passive? Passive, the test be postponed. Person postpones a test. I think this is different in Chinese, right? In Chinese, we say, but if you think about the logic, a test can't do anything. It is the person giving the test that does something. So this should be passive. The test be postponed by the instructor. It is essential. Number five, another subjunctive. Admit. Is this active or passive? This one is active. So, no, the passive. Sorry, passive. This one is passive. Admit here means uh, allow entry, let somebody come in. So, no one be admitted with two T's, right, two T's, uh, to the room without proper identification. You need to have the right ID in order to get into this room. Um, so, active admit means to let somebody in. Passive be admitted means somebody lets you in. In this case, it is the second one. Number six, it is critical that pollution control. Is this active or passive? Passive, right? Pollution be controlled. Two L's. And eventually, this sentence structure tells us it has to be the same. A and B, these two are using the same grammar. So, and eventually, B eliminated. Seven, it was such a beautiful day that one of the students suggested, subjunctive, we. Is this have or be had? It's have, right? Have class outside. 
Number eight, the movie director insisted, subjunctive, that everything about his productions. OK, there is no passive voice. Everything is authentic. It has to be active. So here, everything about his productions be authentic. Nine, it is vital. Vital means important, so this is subjunctive. That no one else is it know or be known. Should be no, right? No one else know about the secret government operation. Number 10, Mrs. Wa asked that we be sure. Uh, this There's also no passive voice here, right? We are sure. We be sure uh, to lock the door behind us. You should remember this phrase, be sure to do something, means to make sure that you do it. Um, this often this will also occur in the imperative. Chi Be sure to lock the door when you leave. I tell you as I leave in front of you. All right, so I'm giving you the order to be sure or to make sure. Eleven, I requested subjunctive that I her sorry, be permitted. To change my class, be allowed, be permitted. Two T's. Thirteen, it is important that you not be late. Sorry, that was number 12. Number 13, it is imperative, which means important, that he Return active, return home immediately. 14, the governor proposed, so it has not yet happened. It's only a possibility. Subjunctive, the governor proposed that a new highway. Be built good highways don't build people build highways. Be built 15. Fumiko specifically asked that I, so asked something. This means request, right? She's requesting that I do something. Asked that I not tell anyone else about it. It's subjunctive because we don't know whether I will follow her. We don't know whether I will listen to her. So it's an open possibility. And 16, she said it was important that no one else be told about it. So actually 15 and 16 mean the same thing. 15, Fumiko asked me not to tell other people. 16, she says nobody else should know. Right, so 15, I tell active. 16, other people not be told passive. Questions about this page? Okay, let's take a short break. When we come back, uh, sorry, during the break, Please do page 26. It is possible that the sentence may be correct.
Okay, let's compare answers on page, uh, what was it, 26? 26. So just for example, right, the first one, the condition is here. The condition uh, should be present tense. And then the possibility is future tense. Therefore, the condition part is wrong. The second one, uh, the condition is present and the possibility is future. This is correct. No change necessary. Number three, the condition is present and the, right, if I have, right, this is present. And the possibility is future. What's wrong with this sentence? Say anything. Say anything. Hey, Lyle. Be kai chen. Hmm. Yes. Number three. Yes, there's nothing wrong with this sentence. Good. Number four, the condition if is future. The possibility is future. What's wrong with this sentence? Washing rule. If the possibility is future, then the condition should be present. If I have. Okay. Okay, good. Number five, the condition is present. The possibility is present. What's wrong with this sentence? Guo Jirong. Number five. Good. We will be late. If the condition is present, the possibility is future. Six. The condition, uh, sorry, yes, the condition is future. The possibility is future. What's wrong with this sentence? Ning Cai Yu. Ning Cai Yu. Number six. Um, so it's either here or here. Which one is wrong? Here. This should be present if we leave. The condition should be present and the possibility is future. All right, so this one should be if we leave, present tense. Okay, okay, good. Seven, the condition here, if, is future, and the possibility is future. So what's wrong with this sentence, Wang Yuqi? Good. If it continues, growing or to grow, either one is fine. To grow is better, right? Because it's expecting. 
Uh, the infinitive is about expectation. All right, so it has not yet happened, so to grow would be better. But you're correct. If it continues is the problem. Okay. Okay. Questions about this page? Okay, let's keep going. Next page. Ah. So we have a more complete context. Uh, the underlined verbs may be wrong, may be right. I'll give you 10 minutes to work on this section. Feel free to discuss with your classmates. This is page 27. Sorry, there's a concept that I think you may need to use. So we talked about the three kinds of possibility, but if your main verb is be, it gets kind of different. If I am late, I will miss the activity. Very standard, open possibility. I am present tense. And I will future tense, so this is fine. Let's say. Uh, well, you can't do this because being late is not a choice. Uh, if I am. Uh, I need to think of an example. If I am. Oh, OK, yeah, OK, if I am funny. Maybe she will like me. So open possibility, you could be funny, you could not be funny. Let's say you're not funny. If but you have time to learn, so this should be past, right? Um. Normally, the past tense of am is was, but for the subjunctive, use were. And then finally, if you're not funny and you will never be funny, sorry, this is uh, just as usual. So the key point is if you're using the be verb, the second one is not was, it's were. Um, so also I earlier I said um, you can translate between these two, right? If he had known earlier is the same as had he known earlier. So if I were funny is the same as were 
I funny. Um, replace the if with your the, with the first word in your verb cluster. 动词组第一个字搬到前面去代替那个 if， 取代那个 if。Okay, please continue.
Okay, let's compare answers. As you know, I am now in charge of implementing the new directive. Directive means order. So this is also a subjunctive that every employee submit no S to a coffee residue test. If a test is given, it's an open possibility. If a test is given at a time when coffee sipping is not authorized and the results are positive, the policy requires, and then because this is one of those verbs, the next verb should be subjunctive. So requires that the worker donate, no S, a pound of coffee to the break room. Do not ask me to describe the union's reaction to this directive. If I told you what the shop steward said, you would blush. All I will say is that the steward was not happy. Had you known, or if you had known, about the reaction before issuing the directive, you would have reconsidered. One more thing, the coffee stains on my shirt, if they... What should this one be? were to remain. I think the idea is if they're still there. So if they remain, should not make you think that I was drinking coffee outside of the official break time. These stains resulted from coffee being thrown at me. Questions about this page? Yes. Ah, if I told you, you could say if I were to tell you. That may, that that's acceptable. So if I told you equals if I were to tell you, and this is because the original subjunctive form is were I to tell you. So these three mean the same thing. Good. Other questions? Okay, if not, let's go to the next page. You will notice that this is the beginning of something called chapter 20 from one of our textbooks. I have given you the entire chapter. Okay, so this should not be too hard. For each sentence, uh, it's a true or false question. All right, so number one, if Sally didn't have the flu, she would be at work today. Does Sally have the flu? Shrije. Number one, A. 
does Sally have the flu? If she didn't, means that she has the flu. Didn't means it's not true. So she has the flu. Is she at work today? If she didn't, she would. But she does, so she's not at work today. Good, thank you. Number two, if Albert didn't take his allergy medication, he would sneeze and cough all day. Kang Jingwei, did Albert take his allergy medication? Yes, he did. Good. And is he sneezing and coughing all day? No, he is not. Good. Number three, if our first flight had been on time, we would not have missed our connecting flight. Lin Yuchen. Lin Yuchen. Uh, Jiang Jing. Number three. Was the first flight on time? If our first flight had been on time, so was it on time? No, it was not. Therefore, did we miss our connecting flight? Yes, we did. Good. Number four, if we had a reliable car, we would drive from the East Coast to the West Coast. Do we have a reliable car? No, we don't. Are we going to drive from the East Coast to the West Coast? If we had a reliable car, we would drive. We don't have a reliable car. Will we drive? Also, no. But the third one, would we like to drive from the East to the West? Yes, we would. We want to, we just don't have the car. Good. And number five, Tim would have married Tina if she had accepted his proposal of marriage. Ten Fang Wei. Did Tina accept Tim's marriage proposal? No, she did not. Did Tina and Tim get married? No, they did not. Does Tim want to marry Tina? Yes, he does. Does Tina want to marry Tim? No, he does. Uh, she doesn't. OK, good. Questions about these five? Yes. OK, you have to have a picture of what happened, right? Tim would have married Tina if she had accepted his proposal of marriage. So the picture is Tim got down on one knee and proposed to Tina and Tina said no. And once you have that picture, you can answer these questions. Did Tina accept? No. Did they get married? No. Does Tim want to? Yes. Does Tina want to? No. OK, good. Other questions? All right, moving on. Uh, this goes on to the next page. So. It's a match. One, two, and three. Uh, it gives you the condition, and you have to match the correct possibility for each group. Okay, let's do this together. Present true. If it's no present true, just means it's an open possibility. If it snows, I will. If it snowed, I would. If it had snowed, I would have. OK, so next page 29. If you come early, we. 
won't. Simple future. If you came early, we wouldn't. It's won't, and then you add another layer of past. 在简单未来是上面加一层过去，所以未来的过去是 would. And if you had come early, we wouldn't have, right? From wouldn't add another layer of past. 从 would 上面再加一层过去，过去的过去是过去完成。啊、uh, ，sorry， 过去，呃，再加过去是加一个完成式，所、so、以 wouldn't have. Group three, if Professor Smith were absent, class. Would be cancelled. Were is past, so it, the past of will is would. If Professor Smith is absent, class will be cancelled. And if Mr. Smith had been absent, class would have been cancelled. Four. If John quits his job, his wife will be upset. If John had quit his job, his wife would have been upset. Right? Had here, have here. And finally, if John quit his job, his wife would be upset. Quit is uh the past tense is the same as the present tense. It's quit, quit, quit. Uh, so this is past tense. Questions about these three? Okay, moving on. So you have a choice of verbs. There are six, it should be like six questions, right? Yeah, six questions. For each question, choose a set of verbs and change them to fit the grammar. I'll give you six minutes. There's a concept here that you may need to use. Let me show you the first one. So we've been talking about possibilities, right? If you do this, then something else will happen. But it's possible that you don't do it, and so that thing will not happen. But if you're talking about a general truth, something that is always true, then it's not a possibility. It's just a statement. So this one. If you boil water to 100 degrees, it. Uh, sorry, heat. If you heat water to 100 degrees, it boils. As a general truth, there is no possibility here. But if you're talking about possibility, then it would be this one. If you heat, it will boil. Yeah, so that's what this set of questions is about. Is it a general truth, habitual activity, predictable fact, or is it just a possibility? Okay, please continue.
OK, let's compare answers. Number two. Habitual activity. So both of these should be present tense. If I forget my schedule, I look at my appointment calendar. The next one is an open possibility. So if I forget, I will look. Number three, sometimes the cat purrs. If you, uh, this one should be pet. If you pet the cat gently, habitual situation, she purrs. Possibility, if you pet, she will purr. For if I, Okay, news. I. Okay, so if I have news and call. Okay. Possibility. If I have any news tomorrow, I will call you. But in a general situation, if I have any news, I call you. So like any time I get news, I call you. This is a general situation. There's no question of possibility. OK, number five, it's eat and get. Possibility, if you eat too much junk food, you will get fat. And the second one is predictable fact. In general, if you eat too much junk food, you get fat. And number six, both of them are B. In general, if it is cloudy, the stars are visible. But open possibility, if it is cloudy tonight, right, we now have a specific situation, the stars will be visible. Questions about this? All right, next part. Untrue. Right, so circle the correct one. Let's do this together. Number one, if I had a million dollars, I would travel around the world. Tsai Huangqing, do I have a million dollars? I don't have a million dollars. Good, B. Number two, if I didn't have a bad cold, I'd, which means I would, Go swimming with you. Zhang Tongyan. Liu Tong. Do you have a bad cold? Number two. I have a bad cold. Good. A. Three. If Jenny were here, she could help us. Alex. Is Jenny here? Jenny is not here. B. Four. If Henry weren't in charge here, nothing would ever get done. Wu Pingrin. Wu Pingrin. Number four. If Henry weren't in charge here, is Henry in charge? Weren't is the past. So is it true? It is not true. Good. Henry is in charge. A. Number five. If I spoke Chinese, I could converse with your grandmother, Wang Peiqi. Song number five. Song number five. If I spoke Chinese, do you speak Chinese? I don't speak Chinese. Good. B. And number six. If I knew the answer, I would tell you. 
Zhen Xiaoqi. Number six, if I knew the answer, do I know the answer? I don't. I don't know the answer. Good. B. Questions about this part? Okay. Uh, the next one looks like it's going to take a lot of time. I'll let you guys do this at home. Do you have any questions about anything before the midterm exam? Okay. Uh, please come on time next week. We're going to do the exam. Good luck.